mind Running from the truth and from the lies Been running into trouble far and wide Can we run it forward and rewind? Maybe we could run away from time I've been running all my Give me emotion I'll build a world around it Carefully mold it Gilded eternity Give me your body I'll wrap my soul around it I have been known to get care I had some eggs on toast. I do this thing where I do like a, there's some super bread from Trader Joe's. It's really packed full of nutrients and stuff like nuts and protein and toast that, put some chive and onion cream cheese on there, fry up some spinach, a lot of spinach because like you can't even really taste that shit, but you know, it's good for you. So I pile a bunch of spinach on there, fry the eggs. And then I put some Louisiana hot sauce on top. Not usually a one-stop type of type of place. I'll usually go to like Hy-Vee or Target, admittedly. I'm Zina. 
I'm going to play some songs, answer some questions. That's kind of just who I am, what I do, you know. I'm very multifaceted when it comes to my work. So, like, I'm dancing, I'm singing, I'm writing, I'm producing, I'm making little arts and crafts. But it all kind of, it seems very, I don't know, because I'm doing everything myself, typically, um, I get very crafty and I, I use what I can to execute whatever vision I'm working towards. I use hot glue guns a lot. So, yeah, I'm just very crafty with everything. And it's all about just following inspiration before anything else. And that could look like so many different things. So I feel like arts and crafts is just a, an easy blanket statement for me when people ask what I do, you know. I don't know. Inspiration to me really comes from within. It comes from what I believe to be a higher power of sorts, you know. Source energy is really what I'm tapping into. Um, but it's always with the desire to express something deep within myself, you know. Um, I feel like I, I rarely pull inspiration from outside sources. It's usually just like, I, I just really have something festering that needs to come out and it makes its way out. Music is kind of, it's a different sort of level of fulfillment. Um, I think it's the easiest way for me to channel and sort of transmute energy. Like, it's such a blessing to be able to feel something really like visceral and maybe unpleasant and then, you know, create something beautiful from it. And... That's, I think, the landscape where that happens most effortlessly. Um, if I'm really just trying to release energy for the sake of just release and for, like, taking care of myself, I love to dance and move. I think that's, that's more of my selfish practice sometimes. Um, just because it feels good. That's the main reason I do it. Maybe. I hate answering this question like what what genre do I affiliate myself with or whatever it's like I think my music is often at least as far as like melodies and lyrics it's very sort of pop driven pop R&B but I don't like to put myself in a box you know no artist does <laughs> um, I think art pop means to me something a little bit different than maybe what it's meant to mean. I think people associate, like, Lady Gaga with art pop. I love Lady Gaga. Maybe that is me. But I think it's a little bit more avant-garde. And to me, art pop is, like, it's related to the arts and crafts part of me. It's like, I kind of make poppy music, but it's very crafty. And uh, I take little pieces from a lot of different genres and put them together so well yeah I mean I'm very in tune I believe with myself and with spirit and with my work it's kind of all the same thing um you know creative energy is the essence of God it's the essence of nature sex everything kind of comes from the same place so for me, my songwriting process especially is very healing to me personally. Um, kind of going back to what I said about like transmuting energy. Um, I find a lot of healing from that practice and I hope that it also helps other people on their journeys. You know, I consider myself a healer as much as I consider myself an artist, I think they're kind of synonymous. Um, and I don't really put a whole lot of focus into like, I don't know, making music that maybe feels like it's healing music, you know, like, like for example, like Erica Badu using like sound bowls and stuff in her work. Um, I know like Janae Aiko does that too. Or, like, just as far as making, like, soundscapes. I mean, I guess I have kind of done that. But it's more abstract to me. It's more just, like, the the intention that I believe I'm infusing everything with 
because it could be a really like grungy, poppy, sexy, slutty song, you know, but like that's healing in a lot of contexts because music is universally healing, I think, and each person is going to receive it a little bit differently. I think right now, probably guitar. Um, I'm getting better, <laughs> so that's always fun. I don't spend as much time playing keys, but I grew up playing, taking piano lessons and stuff. Um, but as far as my skills as an instrumentalist, I typically am only really playing when I'm writing songs, which is a habit I'm trying to break because there's not really much growth that can occur within that box. But they're more just like tools of expression than like, you know, I, I can't say that I'm able to really like shred like that yet, but one day at a time. Well, recently, I've exclusively been listening to soundscapes and, like, meditative sort of compositions, um, specifically Mike, M-M-Y-Y-K-K, another phenomenal artist from the Twin Cities. Um, he has a Moods and Meditations project, and I have that on, like, every single day. Another friend of mine, um, Michael, Michaelton, he has a project called Digital Nap that's also beautiful little soundscapes. Um, I really like to go really deep when I'm working out or like doing anything physical with my body. I feel like <sighs> rather than like putting on music that gets me hyped up, you know, I find that that can kind of makes me work harder than I need to, which to me feels like wasted energy and it feels a little bit detached. But like if I'm listening to something that's really grounding me and keeping me connected to my body and my mind and my spirit, it's it's a much more fulfilling experience, I find. And I think my body responds a lot better and I'm really able to push myself in different ways. So I'll be like at the gym like lifting, whatever, sprinting on the, you know, elliptical, whatever. And it's just like, in my head, you know, people ask what I'm listening to. I'm like, oh, you're never going to believe me, but it works. It works for me. Yeah. I mean, a little bit intentional, a little bit, you know, responding to things that are out of my hands, but, um, I recently took down a lot of my music and I'm kind of focused on live shows, definitely. Um, I feel really the most at home when I'm on stages because I grew up dancing and um, it feels the most integrated for me to like be able to deliver a message directly to people. Um, but as far as like streaming, that's kind of like a whole different worlds there's like the live stuff and then there's like streaming and nobody really knows the right way to do that right now but I'm kind of reapproaching my lifespan on DSPs from like the singles standpoint over the next year because now that I've taken those projects down I have so much music in the vault and it's just giving those the care and attention that they really deserve and then also promoting them with the same level of intention and putting out just one thing at a time and really just create a splash because you got to drop it from up high if you want it to splash. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I love the Tarantino films. That's kind of a basic answer if there's any film majors watching. But... Um, Visually, I'm really inspired by Solange. Um, her music videos, just like the movement of them, the color palettes. They're very picturesque. There's not really a lot happening, but you don't want to look away, you know? So that's something I'm always... Like, I feel like when I have a visual idea, it's kind of in my head in that style, regardless of how it turns out. Like, that's, that's what I'm aspiring to. I'm inspired by sci-fi and, like, thriller, suspense films, stuff like that. I think Zyna kind of has this, like, 
creepy energy sometimes. Like I have a whole batch of songs that are really sort of dark, like industrial, like scary sounds. And all my visual ideas for those involve blood and gore and stuff. So I think that's cool. I want to say Kill Bill, even though that's just about probably as basic as it gets. I also love Jackie Brown. I'd seen it the first time and I was maybe a little bit underwhelmed, to be honest. Somebody compared me to Jackie Brown, though. And I had to watch it again to be like, well, I don't know what you're doing. But then I was like, okay, like, I don't mind that. And now I like that film more because I can see myself in it, you know. One that's coming to mind right now is Beyonce's One Plus One. It's just this beautiful sort of kaleidoscopic dreamscape where she's like all like sparkly and Beyonce, you know. I don't know what specifically about that one really struck me. I don't know, but another like visual performance, that wasn't a music video, but a performance um, at the 2009 or 2010 Grammys that really changed my life. Uh, It was Pink performing Glitter in the Air when she was up in the silks and they dipped her in water and spun her around and I remember seeing that live when I was like nine or 10 and I was like, that's, that's it. That's like, that's the level I want to get to. So I'm always working on singing upside down, you know, for the Grammys. Ricky and I met basically just on Instagram, I think, during the pandemic days. And we started talking. I had a music video idea and... I saw her in it, and that's kind of like the first project we worked on together. That was the music video for my song Lullaby by White Noise. Um, That was the first project we connected on, and since then we've just been homies, you know. We're still all waiting for the day we make a song together, but it might not happen. I don't know. We're very distinct. We have distinct flavors, and where they overlap is kind of yet to be discovered. Leo... The founder uh, was harassing me for a few months to come check it out. And the first day I went over there, it was kind of like, okay, I'm just going to go because I feel bad because they keep harassing me, you know. I had just finished a big project with uh, a ballet company, and it was kind of like the following week. And when you finish a big project, it's kind of like it feels a little bit empty. You're like, what am I going to do with my life now? But I ended up landing in this beautiful nest with people that just, like, showed me the most authentic love and care and, like, really are building something very beautiful where everybody is just... I mean, damn, I've never received as many warm hugs as I did in that space and continue to in that space. Um, So we got together, we started brainstorming what we could do in a cohort situation and kind of just hit the ground running from there um, by, like... Three, four weeks later, I was performing with them. It's definitely given me a lot of opportunities to show up for people just selflessly. Because with my craft, everything I'm doing, you know, because I'm so hands-on, it's like I'm doing everything for myself. And I personally have trouble accepting help. And I have trouble, like, finding time to just, like, be present for other people. And... That's what that community is really about, is just like, how can we all uplift each other at the same time? So I've gotten a lot more opportunities to just be different types of supportive. Like I've, I've done makeup for them for photo shoots and stuff and helped set up little things. You know, it's just it's great to be a part of something bigger than just myself, because a lot of the time I feel like what I'm doing is very it's just me, you know. And I want to be able to expand beyond that. So I'm grateful for those opportunities. I've been dancing since I was five. My parents put me in dance and I never looked back. Uh, I did like the competition dance scene up until I went to high school, which really was kind of toxic and like very white and never really nurtured me. So it's funny, like, I I don't think I was a very good dancer until I left that scene. And since then, 
I've been able to flourish on my own and in different contexts. Um, in high school, I was in a modern dance company that the director, she was kind of like my mom at the time. And those were some of the most enriching sort of creative experiences I've had. Because in that company, we did all of our own set design and like just the overall theme for the show every year. We pick a theme and choreograph everything ourselves and make our own costumes and just create this show like all ourselves. And I think that's really what sort of equipped me with the tools to build worlds on my own. During that time, my director would always say, you know, once you graduate high school and you leave this space, you're always going to say that that was the best thing you ever did. And we were like, okay, you're probably right. But now that I'm there, I'm She's probably right, you know. And after that, um, it's hard to find opportunities to dance as an adult, but I've found the most joy with pole dance and, like, just being able to do that alone in my house, really, because it's something that's pushed me beyond my limits, you know, in a lot of different ways. And that practice is just really sacred to me just being able to do it alone in my house you know I don't need community for that specifically so it kind of kept me engaged with my body and my movement practice after leaving school and stuff I think that's silly I think I don't know I kind of see a difference also between maybe like dancing and just moving and I think there are so many movers out there who maybe have never taken a dance class in their lives, but it's just like they're able to tap into their bodies and like express themselves and really feel. And like everybody has access to that. Dance is for everybody. And you don't need the technique. You just have to be confident and like be able to feel yourself. And musicality helps, rhythm helps, but like you don't even need music to move. Maybe that I'm pretty goofy. You got to get me in the right space. Because Zina is very, like, like, Zina is very, like, serious, you know? Like, like I'll just, like, there's a little bit of mystery there, you know? I hope. But outside of that context, I feel much lighter. So I've been working towards, like, integrating some of that goofiness and some of that lightheartedness into my work because I feel like I take things too seriously a lot of the time. What's next for me? Um, as I was saying before, I will be sort of reinventing a lot of my catalog that I've recently taken down and hopefully putting that out over the next year and beyond. I know there's a lot of people right now that are kind of pissed off that I took that music down. And I love that they feel that way because that means it touched them, you know, which I'm grateful for. But I got to do things a little differently this year. <laughs> so... I feel like more than anything, I'm focused on just being happy and spreading joy and love and trying to not get carried away with all of the little tasks I have to do every day. I'm very good at finding time for myself because I feel like I can't, I can't give anything unless I'm full, you know? I'm always very mindful of that and preserving that within myself.